Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. a terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. All right, welcome to The Advocate. Another week, but certainly not just another program. This one comes with plenty of source. Uche shakes things up by challenging, are we a nation without hope? I sincerely hope not. Sandra has had a revelation moment, and she wants to share her new vision with us, which is that the future is not female. To some, might say, before Uncle. Liberos is ready to break the table. He says, divided we stand. Some might strongly agree, just as some might disagree. So we might as well be divided on this one. Emeka is doing a stock take of sorts, and he queries, is the Nigerian stock market playing a magic trick on us? I'm certainly not under any illusions with my advocacy. I'm saying it directly as I know how. Hateful actions speak louder than hateful words. After the break. Actions certainly speak louder than words. Then infuse these said actions with hate, and we are talking amplified sound. So hateful actions speak louder than words. Nigeria is at worst crippled and at best a joke. There's nothing funnier than when a bunch of senators imagine that they should consider death penalty for use of what they term hate speech. For a while now, the Buhari regime, through the Ministry of Information and Culture, have been transfixed on this matter of hate speech. It seemed to be all they cared about. They were simply looking to shut down critics. It is just like how rice is a new fixation. Meanwhile, elections have turned ugly with killings and injury, with cheating and disregard for the will of voters. Borders close with resultant inflation. They spin lies about cars manufactured in Nigeria, which are actually made in China and rebadged here. These sideshows can only distract the poorly educated, which is sadly most of us. These lies, spins, and suppression are the ultimate instruments of hate. They are hateful actions, and they speak louder than hateful words. With 200 million Nigerians, I very much doubt that it is the citizenry that will engage in or propagate successfully hate speech. It can only come from the more organized and financed government and politicians. It is them that I send a warning and some advice. Change your ways. It is your disdain for the common man that could partially fuel hate speech. If you do not know it, the people are changing and the nation will undergo a revolution of ideas and ways and you will all be blown away, brooms, umbrellas and all. To avoid hateful action, one must avoid hateful thoughts. Genuine actions of love and compassion will propagate joy and peace. Think of good schools, hospitals, infrastructure improvement. Think of the people and the nation first. Get paid less. It's as easy as ABC. The problem is government, not the people. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would like to say <laughs> quite boldly that I don't believe we are living in a democracy. I don't even think we ever lived in a democracy. I think the way we are, this government is really for themselves. It's not for the people. Because every single thing they put in place seems to go against the people's wishes. Now, you've mentioned this hate speech. It's really because they're underperforming. In fact, they're not even performing. Let's not even talk about underperforming. So what do you then do? You shut everybody up. You tell them, you know what, if you say this, it's hate speech, yeah. we'll put you away. Why don't you just perform? Like you said, it's easy as mm. ABC. Clearly, these people don't go into government with um, the yeah. thought of being good and um, 
you know, doing things for the citizens. They're there for themselves. Yeah. So absolutely, I'm, I'm with you, Chuka. They are the ones inciting hate speech. They are the ones, in, not even hate speech, hate action, action, as you put it. And one of these days, something will change. Something yeah. will give. Because the dam, as far as I'm concerned, is about, about to break. To yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm in agreement. Um, you know, I was always say on this show, I think the fundamentals, the fundamental in my view with regards to uh, this particular hate speech or this attempt at mm. regulating speech is because, largely because, um, as you just said, governance um, is very distant from, from, from the people, from the government. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if I agree with you, really, that the people who govern us, the politicians, currently politicians today, see this thing as really, it's, it's, it's a tool they want to use to mm. control what people say because um, they're, not this, they're not performing. They're not performing. Mm. And so this is their own tool. It's not for, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, mm. people say things mm. to each one another. This is not uh, a, a legislation or an instrument uh, with, that will be helpful to a Mecca and Chuka mm. or, or, or anyone. This is really the politicians who do not want people to be, to be able to say things mm -hmm. that will not favor them or exactly. things that they, are not, they don't want to be said. Mm. That's how I say it. Mm -hmm. yes. But largely, I think that um, the politicians see themselves as being different. It's almost like that um, GRA mentality. Mm. You know, when the <laughs> colonial people came, they went and built themselves nice houses in government reserved areas. Uh, when the British left, our politicians then went and lived in those places and now saw themselves as distant from, from, the, people. from, from the people. So they are secluded. So the people in, in the parliament see themselves as that. And I think that's really, so they're creating laws to create a barrier, a barricade, yes. to defend themselves mm -hmm. from us. Yes. And that's really how I see yeah. it. And I mean, what um, I think they are also trying to do is to create sort of like a one-party system whereby the critics are being silenced and yeah. you know they don't have a voice to Absolutely. speak out or to yeah. challenge whatsoever they're doing. Mm -hmm. And also, just like um, Chuka said, at this point in time, is this what we really yeah. need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about hate, hate speech. I mean, mm -hmm. we are faced with situation of you know corruption and faced with election killing, and then you are trying to propagate. So I think this is just a misplaced priority, and the government is simply trying to chase shadows at this point in time, trying to divert the um, the, the populace their attention from what is currently happening mm -hmm. to chasing hate mm -hmm. speech mm -hmm. and. Fixing death penalty, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. outrageous and That's really ridiculous. ridiculous. Because, first of all, the Constitution already states yeah. what should happen. Mm. We all have, we are guaranteed freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. You come in to introduce death penalty. For what? For what exactly? To what you, end? You, you see, uh, uh, briefly, like we have all agreed that mm. um, um, it's uh, the fear of underperformance. Mm. Uh, because this government came with so much promises, mm. so much hope. And I agree with you that um, action begets hate, hatred. Um, and if you talk about the action of this government right from the opposition, they actually yes. you know, created hatred. Yes. They spread hatred. Yes, they did. They founded hatred in politics that mm -hmm. in 2015, a lot of people were scared that we might not see beyond 2015. Mm -hmm. And like Senator Abaribe once said, if we had this law in place from 2011 to 2015, Alaji Lai Mohammed would not be alive mm -hmm. today. today. Mm -hmm. If president, you remember the, also, yeah. the president also made some. After the election, yeah. one expected that, you know, being the president, whether for those that elected you and those that didn't elect you, you would unify and unite everybody because yes. the drums of war, the hatred that yes. you people created. Yes. But what did he do? So he said, I, don't, I won't treat everybody the same mm. way. Exactly. 75, 97, and 5%. Mm. Yes. I don't know how that mathematics add to 100. Yeah. That's a topic <laughs> for another day. Yeah. As if that's not enough, um, his uh, media aid, told those that were criticizing the government, yes. he called them whalers. Mm. Yes. If that is not hatred, yes. I wonder that would be. Yes. And so, with their inaction and non-performance, people now started calling out yes. all the promises. Yes. And mm -hmm. I agree, social media sometimes can be very irritating. Very irritating. But to now say that um, you will want to kill people yeah. for <laughs> criticizing. Yes. And this was the same government that came and said, I belong to nobody and mm. I belong to everybody. everybody. Yeah. But you have been selective so far. And if you are selective and you still don't want us 
to point out those I wonder in a society like ours where law regulates society, it is the law that should determine what hatred is. And we still have the law of defamation and libel. Yeah. Exactly. So if you feel that I have libeled you, you go to you court. Go to court. Yeah. Yeah. Simple as that. I, mean, yeah. I heard that the, the Senate, I mean, the, they don't actually, the House of Assembly, they don't have the right to even legislate on this hate speech. Yeah, is that yeah, true? The, the, these are, these uh, are not matters that are within the exclusive legislative mm. list. I see. These are residual matters. Yeah, okay. They're for states. Mm. Okay. And, and so, I wonder how they want to do this, because they would hide under Section 39, Sub 2, to say, well, um, that we can, from these powers, government can make laws to regulate speech. Right. But when the main, main clause of, of Section 39 okay. says you guarantee freedom of expression, but that this expression in some cases can be cut mm. But I now wonder how they will be Can't able to cut it. How do you, <laughs> what do we determine? The, what will amount to hate speech? Mm. I don't even think who it's been well defined. What is hate speech? Yes. I mean, yeah. so, so how do you. How who do, will you know? determine what is so hate speech? And even as we speak now, there are from 1999, you know, because once you're on death row, the governor needs to consent before right. such person before. can be executed. Yes. From 1999 to date, no. No. not more than one governor has signed, yes. you know, yeah. warrant of execution. Yes. And, and so, because they also know that what is breeding all of this is the corruption that yeah. they all are involved in. Absolutely. Well, we keep speaking, though our words may be misunderstood. Ultimately, we want what's best for the majority. Ironically, Uche wants to provoke hope by challenging us to acknowledge the root causes of an apparently hopeless situation after the break. <laughs>